Seems uh, poetic, I suppose, that a guy who started acting with a tiny bit part on Sex and the City should end up deemed sexiest man alive. It took an epic hangover in between to push Bradley Cooper into the A-list, and now that he's there, he's anxious to bust the typecasting mold, prove his chops, and here's ABC's Chris Conley with the Nightline interview. Hut, 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 hut. Odds are you know Bradley Cooper from his work in such R-rated comedies as Wedding Crashers. Big tree fall hard, right? <laughs> How many fingers I got up? And The Hangover 1 and 2. The bachelor party the whole night, it just... Things got out of control. For me, Hangover was sort of a huge shift in terms of being able, being recognized more and having more opportunity. But, but the truth is, it's been such a sort of slow, incremental growth for me uh, in this business. Because while you can see Cooper now on magazine covers or squiring stunning actresses in the tabloids or promoting his movies, in French. Bonjour Bradley. Bonjour, je suis tellement content d'être ici. Merci. This son of a stockbroker, raised with his sister outside Philadelphia, didn't act until his years at Georgetown and wasn't ticketed for the A-list. I have never walked through my life having to deal with, oh, he's just too good looking. Sack Lodge was not the handsome. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> a lot of the feedback was, you know, Brad, what a nice guy. He was just, yeah, I had no edge. He just got no edge. And I was really bummed out by that. In fact, set the Bradley Cooper Wayback Machine to 2002, and you'll find his first Hollywood role, alongside Jennifer Garner as Sydney in Alias. What I said before about not trusting you and... Well, don't worry about it. Tippin', Will Tippin'? Well, yeah, <laughs> everybody loved Will Tippin'. Oh, really? Not when he was on there. <laughs> Back then, Cooper would check out those newfangled Alias message boards. Even now, he hasn't forgotten what they were saying. Who is this guy? Uh, he needs to take a shower, and God, please don't let Sydney wind up with him. And I remember I was like, oh my God. Next thing you know, the New York Times does an article about the impact of message boards and cites my character as being a hated character. And I literally thought, the world is going to end. <laughs> Can't somebody say, hey, let's be positive. Let's have a good ending to the story. Now, a decade later, at 37, he's going deep. So how's your thing going? Dancing thing. That's good. How's your restraining order? I wouldn't actually call the restraining order my thing. Starring alongside Jennifer Lawrence in what could be career-altering roles for them both in David O. Russell's Silver Linings Playbook. It's a part he says he nearly spurned. I'm from Philly. Yeah. I'm Italian and Irish. I'm a huge Eagles fan. And his parents are like my parents in many ways. And, uh, and but I thought, yeah, yeah no, I'm not right for this. I'm Despite gonna, all the parallels to yeah, your own life. I, I really, and I think it was fear. Everything good? Mm-hmm. I've never really cried on film. I've never had to do that. He does that and a lot more, as straight out of the asylum, Pat, all too eager to win back his wife, and to joust with his father, played by Robert De Niro. She's gone. She's not around anymore. Nikki left. The film's being buzzed about for end-of-the-year awards and such, but to some minds, Cooper's already enjoyed the ultimate acclaim. While shooting the movie, he was named People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. I remember when I got the call, it was in the trailer, we were in between shots, and I really did think it was a joke. And then I thought, oh, people aren't gonna like that. Bradley Cooper is just fine, but Ryan Gosling is the fine. You are the only sexiest man alive <laughs> whose selection was ever picketed. <laughs> exactly. Outside the people you know, it was brutal. Offices. It was brutal. What would you say the key features of your reign has, have been? <laughs> the key now, features? Now that it's winding down. I actually petitioned myself to see if I could if there, usually there's a cutoff. I wanted to make it two years. A two year reign. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was hoping. Yeah, like Bloomberg. I think honestly it makes everybody else feel better that if this guy's the sexiest man, then I'm doing pretty well. His unexpected stature in this unlikely career has an even more improbable origin. A female student at his high school whom he vowed somehow to follow to Georgetown. They had the yearbook where they would say where everybody was going. And then they had the dot, you know, like 18 dots. Sure. And then Georgetown <laughs> University. And I thought, oh, that sounds right. But he was rejected. A year later, he tried again and got in. And I ran downstairs with my father. We were so happy. Wow. Yeah, it was a huge thing. It was a huge lesson, don't give up. His time there would lead him to his life's ambition, acting. Let me tell you something. You don't know anything about my marriage. OK, Dad? All right. And eventually, to a blessing of sorts from his once skeptical father, who died last year. When he saw my thesis, I still remember it, uh, which was the Elephant Man. Uh, afterwards, he sort of hugged me and he was crying and he was like, you gotta, you gotta do this for your living. You know, and I saw the switch happen. What's that like? It was awesome. 
Yeah, it was amazing. That was, uh, that was incredible. I'm Chris Connolly for Nightline in Los Angeles. Good, yeah.